last, last but not least, we need to review 8.3. These are rational functions and their graphs. And these are different from the ones we did before. And you can tell because there will be x's in the numerator. And your x's will have a power greater than 1. So every single time you see one of these, the very first thing you need to do is factor. So in the numerator, I can tell that I have a GCF. If I factor that out, then I have x squared plus 4x minus 5. And that factors. So it's a trinomial, so I need to use my a times c method. So a is 1 and c is negative 5. So what multiplies to give me negative 5 and adds to give me 4? So I can write the factors of negative 5 down. And in order for it to give me negative, I know 1 has to be positive and 1 has to be negative. And the way to get 4 is to make the 1 negative and the 5 a positive. Now in the denominator, I have x, x squared minus 1. Those are both, both perfect squares. So I write them 1 with a plus sign and 1 with a minus sign. Now if you look here, I also can, I need to review my um, factors and see if I have any common factors in the numerator and the denominator. I do, I have x minus 1, so that means um, wherever x minus 1 equals 0, which in this case is 1, I'm going to have a hole there. Okay, So I need to take that and plug it back into this function to get its y value, because I have to graph it as an open circle. So my y value will be 1 times 1 plus 5 divided by 1 plus 1. So that's going to be 6 times 1. So my y value is going to be 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So on my graph, I will have 1, 3 as an open circle. So over 1 and up 1, 2, 3. There's my open circle. Then to tell if I have a vertical asymptote or not, to look at my vertical asymptotes, I need to look at what's left after I've canceled any holes, so make sure you cancel holes first. Then I look at my denominator, and anywhere the denominator has an x, and we can set it equal to 0. Um, so x equals negative 1, that is my vertical asymptote. So on my graph, negative 1 is my vertical asymptote. So draw that in as a dashed line. So remember, you cannot divide by 0, and that is why you're going to have, um, if it cancels, then wherever that is will be a hole. If it's still there and doesn't cancel, it makes a vertical asymptote. Now, horizontal asymptotes, I need to look at the degree. The degree of my, oops, not degree, the degree of my numerator, and my original problem is 3. And the degree of my denominator in my original problem is 2. Remember, the degree is the exponent. So when the degree of my numerator is larger than the degree of my denominator, then I have no um, horizontal asymptotes. I may have an oblique or a slant asymptote, but we're not going to make you find that. And then also we need to find my x-intercepts. So my x-intercepts are going to be where y equals 0. So here's my original function. If I make y equals 0, then I'd multiply both sides by x plus 1. And 0 times anything is going to still be 0. So actually, you can use a cheat code. And for your x-intercepts, just set anything in the numerator that still has an x equal to 0. So at x equals 0 and at x plus 5 equals 0. So 0, and then um, the y value is always 0. Here, I would get negative 5. It's a terrible 5. Um, and so its ordered pair would be negative 5, 0. Now, both of those have y value of 0 because to get an x-intercept, you plug 0 in for y. So I can graph those three things. So I've got two x-intercepts and a hole. That doesn't really give me a very good um, idea about what the graph is going to do. So I grab my graphing calculator or some other way to format an XY chart. 
and I am going to type that in. Make sure when you type it in, you put the numerator in parentheses, close your parentheses, divided by, and type in your denominator. Then you go to your table. Um, negative 12 is going to be off my graph. Oh, to get to table, you do second graph. Um, and if you want to change this, you can change this on second window to make it start at a different value, count by different values. If you change this independent to ask, then you can type in whatever x values you want and it will give you the y values. If you leave them both on auto, then it will just leave this um, populated for you. So um, I can tell that I have a vertical asymptote at negative 1, so I know I need to get some information for this left side and some information for this right side. I was running out of space, so I only made one xy chart, but we can split it up here. Um, so let's look at the left side. Um, let's look at negative 10. That gives me negative 5.5. Um, actually, negative 5.556, so we'll round correctly. Negative 5.6. Um, if I look at, let's skip some, negative 7, negative 2.3, negative 4, 1.3, and negative 2 is at 6. So let's see if that gives me enough information. So negative 10, 5.6. And I don't have to graph 5 because it's at 0. 4 is at 1.3 and negative 2 is at 6. Now if you look in your calculator at negative 1, it will tell you error because that's where my vertical asymptote is. If I look at 1, it will also tell me error because that's where my hole is. Now the calculator doesn't differentiate between the two for you. Um, and you don't, um, don't need to be dependent on the calculator, so make sure you're finding the whole and the vertical asymptote algebraically. But that gave me enough information, I kind of missed that point, sorry. Um, that gave me enough information to draw in this left branch. Okay, so this was to the left of my vertical asymptote. So over here I need some information to the right. I already see my x-intercept and my hole, so I know it's going to go through these two, but I don't know what else it's going to do, so let's get some more information. So after one, I, uh, hmm, I don't really know what it's doing in between here, yeah? So I'm going to change my, when my table to ask, so I can look at, I don't really know what it's doing between my asymptote and this, um, x-intercept at 1, so I'm going to put in negative 0.5 and see what it gives me. Um, so at negative 0.5, I'm going to be at negative 4.5, so I can tell that my graph is probably going to go down pretty quickly here, so let's look and see what it's doing over here. Um, how about 3? Is that 6? Um... 5 is at 8.3, and 6 is at 9.4, okay, I think that will give me enough information. Um, I'd like to have one more in there, oh, 3, So I can tell what this graph is doing now. So I graph these together. Remember, don't draw through your hole. Leave it as an open circle. And then it's zooming down next to that vertical asymptote. But remember, do not touch it or cross it. All right, next one. Same thing. I have encountered rational because um, I have x's in the numerator and they have degrees bigger than 1. So we have to factor. Okay, so I have a GCF of X, and now I have a trinomial, so I factor with the AC method. A is 1, C is negative 12, so I'm going to have factors of negative 12, and they need to give me negative 1, so that's going to be negative 4 and 3. Here I also have a GCF of X, and that leaves me with X squared minus 16. That's a difference of squares, so I'm going to have an X plus 4 and an X minus 4. 
All right, on this one now again, I need to look and see if I have any holes. Remember, holes are created when I have a factor in the numerator and in the denominator that can cancel, and I do. So where does x minus 4 equal 0 at? Well, 4. Plug that back into your equation that's left. So 4 times 4 plus 3 divided by 4 times 4 plus 4. Um, so that is going to be, oh wait, time out. Sorry, I'm not paying attention. These x's also cancel, so I'm also going to have a hole at wherever x equals 0. So what's left is, I'm running out of space, what's left is x plus 3 divided by x plus 4. So into that, I will plug my 4. So 4 plus 3 divided by 4 plus 4. So I have 7 divided by 8. So uh, I'm going to have a hole at 4 comma 7 eighths. Oh gosh, what is 7 eighths? 0.875. That's going to be fun. And then 0, I have 0 plus 3 divided by 0 plus 4, so 3 fourths. So I'm going to have an open circle at 0, 3 fourths, which is 0.75. Okay, so over 4, up 8.75, there's an open circle, and 0, 0.75, there's an open circle. Well, this is going to be an interesting graph. Okay, vertical asymptotes next. So to look at vertical asymptotes, I look and see what is still in the denominator because we can't divide by zero. So x plus four is still in the denominator. Where does it equal zero? Well, at negative four. So that is going to be my vertical asymptote. So at negative four, I'm gonna have a dash line. Oops, I'm kind of missing the, sorry about that, missing the, line there. Um, so go up and down at x equals negative 4 and so you'll have a branch on the right and a branch on the left of that. Um, now my horizontal asymptote, the degree, I just keep writing that, the degree of the numerator and we need to compare it to the degree of the denominator. In my original function my degree of the numerator was 3 and my degree of the denominator was also 3 so when they are equal, I need to do y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator. Remember, the leading coefficient is in front of the term with the largest degree over the leading coefficient of the denominator. So I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. So remember, another line to get very close to, but not to touch, well, not to touch or cross. Um, remember, you can cross horizontal asymptotes, but this graph will not. Um, then last but not least, x, well, no, not even last. Last thing to find is x-intercepts. So anything that's left in the numerator, we set equal to 0. So when we subtract 3, we get x equals negative 3. So my ordered pair is going to be negative 3, 0. All right. Well, now we need to get some get an xy chart with either a graphing calculator or some other device. So we're going to type in x to the third minus x squared minus 12x. Close my parentheses divided by x to the third minus 16x. Um, and then we are going to hit second graph. So we can get our table, oh, and I changed it to ask, so I'm going to change it back to auto so I can populate it. Okay, so here I go. So I need some to the left of negative 4, so maybe negative 10, negative 7, negative 5. Let's see if that gives me um, enough information. So scroll up to those, so negative 10 is at 1.17. That's rounding. Um, negative 7 is at 1.3, and negative 5 is at 2. So 
negative 10 at 1.17, negative 7 at 1.3, and negative 5 at 2. Um, I would really like to see what that is doing a little closer there, so I'm going to type in negative 4.5, okay. At negative 4.5, it is at 3. So now I can kind of tell that that is, oh, I graphed those wrong, sorry. So I'm going to use erasable pens. There, now I can tell a little bit better that that is going to go up as it gets close to this vertical asymptote. Remember, you cannot cross it, and that one's going to get closer and closer on the left side. Okay, so that was the left of my vertical asymptote. Now I need to do the right of my vertical asymptote. Well, I can already tell that I have this x-intercept here and a couple holes. So let's maybe get negative 3.5. So I can tell what that's doing. Negative 3.5 gave me negative 1. Okay, so that looks like that's going down. Um, let's double check somewhere out here, like 7. That's my favorite number. Um, 7 is at 0.91. Okay. Um, so I think I can tell that I need to go kind of through that hole, through that hole, through that, and get close to that down here. We should probably check 10 just to make sure it doesn't cross. Okay, 10 is at 0.93. Okay, so it's not going to cross that horizontal asymptote. You do need to double check that because um, your graphs can cross your horizontal asymptotes. This one didn't, so. Um, um, and you can also put in some other numbers here if you're not sure. You can do like negative 2 or positive 2 um, just to round your graph out. And so you're just double sure that that's what your graph looks like. Okay, make sure you study, study, study. Good luck on your quiz.